Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I ended up painting up the Corian Sumatra's possessed or reborn model that I did in a recent video. As much as this is a tutorial, it's also just as much a load of my thought processes on how I've got the project through to completion. Now let's paint. At the end of the last video, he just had a real simple uh, sort of grey zenithal prime on him. So just lit from the top. So I just wanted to go in and do a little bit more on the pre-shade. Uh, I've used Tamiya Flat White here. I've thinned it about four or five drops of Tamiya X28 thinner to one drop of paint. And I'm spraying it about 25 PSI in a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle airbrush. Uh, this is our Cult of Paint Infinity from Harder and Steenbeck. And as you can see, what I'm going in is I'm, I'm recognizing all those areas of light that I've caught with that simple zenithal before and I'm just enhancing them and taking them right the way up to a nice bright pure white and this is because we're going to be doing red as the main color on the armor and red is one of those colors that really really benefits from a nice bright uh, grayscale pre-shade um, if you get it right you can very often get away with just one or two reds as your main color so I haven't concentrated too much because I don't want the airbrushing to be a, a major feature of this model um, but it's nice. There's now more of a directional light source on him as you turn the model around in your hands. It sort of makes sense across the model and draws the focus to the areas that I want it drawn to. Now I did a Red Corsairs video last year at some point. Um, so I'll link that up in the top. It's a slightly different recipe to the one I've used here. Um, we used Mephiston Red on one of our classes recently. I thought, oh, do you know what? That's quite a nice color. I'd never really used it before. Um, so I just thought I'd give it a whirl. Uh, on this so this is thinned about two maybe three drops of thinner now this is normal thinner this time because it's a water-based acrylic not a solvent based acrylic like the tamias are um, yeah about three drops of thinner to paint uh, and then taking my time just working my way around uh, and spraying all the areas that i think are going to be red one of the tricky things with the red corsairs is they have sort of black armor parts red armor parts and a little bit of brass trim uh, and when there's as much trim as there is for instance on this model I just I, I was a bit concerned about it looking a little messy um, so what I've tried to do in a way is sort of ignore all of that trim and just think of him in, in simpler body parts so his feet his shins his thighs uh, you know his, his abdomen shoulders that sort of thing and once I was happy with all, where all the red parts were I then loaded up corn red and I diluted this a similar amount uh, maybe a touch more because it's a little bit of a thicker paint. Uh, these were both the base paints. Um, I think Mephiston's a base paint anyway. They're not the air paints, put it that way. Um, and I'm just spraying this red into the shadows to enhance them um, and create those shapes uh, a little bit, make them a little bit more defined. Um, but also where we blend that corn red over the Mephiston red through the airbrush, we just get another tone of red, which is nice. Um, but as I said, the airbrushing is not a huge uh, concern. Uh, on this model wasn't looking to try and show off with it or anything um, it's just sort of a means to an end uh, of how to smoothly get some color across these really quite large surfaces i mean he's near enough sort of dreadnought sized um, so it certainly helped me it's certainly quicker than if i've been doing it uh, with the normal hairy brush so here's the red um, bar weathering that's it that's, that's all i'm going to be doing to it um, next up we need to address the black parts of the model um, pretty simple um, as I said I've been using uh, uh, some artwork as references for where I want to put the different colors um, and it made sense to start with the red because that was going to be the one that was going to be covered the most now I really can't be bothered with masking and particularly on a model this large um, which is this easy to access parts I was confident I'd be able to get away with not masking stuff um, so my chosen black here is Vallejo model color black I've had to thin this quite heavily to get it going through the airbrush. My airbrush is still at 25 PSI. It's what I spray at 99% of the time. Uh, I just thin my paints accordingly. Um, and I have good control with the trigger on this brush of how much air I'm actually releasing. So you do have a, a level of control uh, with the pressure uh, there as well. Um, and then I'm just going in um, blacking out those areas really. The head, as much as it is a focal point of the model, um, I think it looks good with a black helmet. Um, so 
I know this head was a funny one. I think from the conversion point of view, I think it was perfect, exactly how I wanted. But I don't know. I kind of, kind of wish maybe it had been a slightly different helmet that I'd have been able to do some some more stuff with. Now, about fourteen years later, I'd finished blacking out all of the trim, um, and uh, I sprayed the the ultramarine in his hand blue. That's just ultramarine's blue contrast straight over the the pre shade. Nothing more than that. That'll do. It's all it needs to be. Um, I've given the whole model now a couple of coats of polyurethane gloss varnish. I use that because it's a big bottle I've had for ages. But any gloss varnish you like to use through your airbrush or through a rattle can, uh, just go for it. We want the model to have a nice shiny surface to prep it for the next couple of stages. And the next stages are going to be decals and a pin wash. Now, when I thin this varnish, I thin it about one to one with thinner, and it probably three or four coats till I get the model looking nice and shiny. Now for our pin wash, uh, I'm going to use an oil paint. This is Shadow Brown by Absolute 502, but basically a, a dark brown colour. Uh, and I'm going to thin it down with some mineral spirits. Uh, if I've got plenty of time for a project, I'll use Sandstore, uh, which is by Windsor Newton. It's an odourless mineral spirit artist grade. Uh, if I'm in a hurry, then I'll just use normal uh, from the DIY store uh, white spirit, which is what I'm using in this case um, because it dries quicker. Uh, Sandstore has... Uh, it, it is, prolongs the drying time um, which is great most of the time except when I'm trying to get a video done um, really quickly uh, as I may have been uh, in this instance and then it's just a case of washing that mixture over the model and you might find you have to do this two or three times not necessarily over the whole model but certain areas um, and that's all to do with just getting that consistency right getting it pooling where you want it to um, but yeah you know this this would be dry after 15 minutes or so left on its own um, and, yeah, and you could do it again. I just want to take a sec to say thank you very, very much for your support. Um, over here, you know, we passed 50,000 subs recently, which is awesome. Um, and particularly over on Patreon, um, the support you give us over there allows us to do all the things we're doing and much more that's coming in the pipeline. So if you fancy getting exclusive tutorials over there each week, um, as well as a few other bits and bobs um, and supporting our work, you know, we, we hugely appreciate it. We we genuinely couldn't do it without you. So thanks everybody for your support over there. Once the uh, wash had dried, uh, I gave the model just a thin coat of ultra matte varnish. Now this is because I want to now paint over um, areas of the model and it's a lot harder to paint over glossy areas uh, than it is over a more matte area. The paint will stick to the matte area much better. Um, you can see I did the decals at that stage as well. I'll pop a link up in the top dedicated to applying decals to to a miniature um, so this isn't meant to be the final uh, finish of the model or anything like that it's just to allow me to uh, to paint it um, and unusually for my sort of painting process I'm going to do one of the metallic steps uh, at this stage and that is to base coat where I think the areas of brass should be and this is because as I mentioned before they've got brass trim but they've also got black trim and I think there's a real risk when you've got a red model with brass or gold you know type trim you can risk it looking a bit world eaters uh, or potentially even word bearers depending on, on how you've gone with it um, and I wasn't quite sure as I said with all these bits and bobs on the model what was going to be brass what was going to be black so I just really really took my time um, went worked around the model and just base coated it all in decayed metal those areas that I wanted to be brass now I'm going to give the model um, more of a matte finish once I finish with the armor and it doesn't matter that my base coat for my metal, in this case the decay metal, is matte. That's not a problem um, because the paint that I put on after it will not have a matte finish. So we'll still get that nice uh, reflective metallic look. Uh, now it was just time for some, some tippy-tappy chipping, really. Um, all I've done on my palette is added a little bit of off-white. I used ivory in this case, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, just an off-white mixed into Mephiston Red, um, thinned with a little water on my palette. And then with a brush that's got a nice point on it, I'm just working around all of the edges and just doing lots of little taps and dashes just to create chips. Um, I figure this guy probably doesn't take terribly good care of his armor. And I imagine, you know, anyone lucky enough to be his artificer or whatever probably doesn't last very long either. Um, so I wanted lots of nice little scratches and stuff on here. Um, and then I'm going to do exactly the same for the black area. Um, in this case, uh, obviously not with the red, uh, I've just mixed the white or uh, the ivory rather into the black. I'm going to do the same with that. It is quite a long stage. It's not as long as 
blacking the thing out. Um, but it's quite a laborious stage, but I really enjoy it. Um, I was listening to the Huron Blackheart uh, audiobook by Mike Brooks um, while I was painting this model, so I didn't really mind just sort of zoning out and, and enjoying that. Uh, now I've gone in with a dark brown colour. This is Dark Umber by Pro Acryl, but it really doesn't matter. Something like Rhinox Hide, Burnt Umber, whatever, just a brown. Um, and I'm just adding in sort of dirt and corrosion here. I'm aiming largely on the areas where I've done a lot of the chipping already, but also where there's sort of recesses, um, I, I might push it a little bit further um, and just create larger areas of, of corrosion on the armor. I'll talk about it a little bit more at the end of the video, but this project um, changed a lot. It, it very nearly didn't get done. Um, so whilst I haven't done all the steps and stages that I would perhaps in an ideal world like to have done on this model, um, I'm still getting done what needs to be done to, to get the, the vibe across, I think, that I wanted um, with him. Now, for the areas of mutation uh, on him, uh, I'm just going to base coat them in a, a colour called Flat Flesh by Tamiya. Um, the reason I've chosen this is, is very often light colours through the airbrush, um, it can be harder to get them smooth. Uh, the closer they are to white, it can be quite hard to get them smooth. So if I have to spray a very light colour through the airbrush with a lot of control, uh, I really like to use Tamiya's. Um, so that was thinned, I don't know, similar to the flat white, four or five drops thinner to paint. And once it's dry, I got a bunch of oil paints on my palette, a little dish of mineral spirits and a couple of old brushes. So they're good quality brushes, but they've, they're not quite good enough to be normal paint brushes anymore. And now I'm just going to start splodging these different colours onto all the fleshy parts and just creating some gribbly horrible uh, tones uh, on there. This is something I, I really enjoy doing. I really like painting in this way. Um, the colours I've used here were sort of a, a, a pinky flesh colour, uh, an orangey flesh colour, uh, a red uh, and a blue. So it sort of would enable me to make purples up as well from that. Um, and it was just say, just fun, just splodge it all over, get tons of horrible sort of blends of color going in, which you wouldn't be able to do, or I wouldn't be able to do with acrylic paints. Um, but you can do it in a very short space of time with oils, so it's super fun. And then I'm gonna paint the claws in black. Uh, again, I'm using oil paint here, and that's because I want to try and get a fun blend going between the black talons into that real pink flesh of his. And by using the oils, um, I find it quite simple to blend those uh, together, certainly more simple than when we're blending acrylic paints. So once I've got it uh, all applied on there where I want it, I then just put a little bit of thinner on my brush and just work the areas backwards and forwards where they meet until I get the desired blend. And sometimes it won't go right and I'll have to go back in with one of the colors, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's very stress-free and that kind of <laughs> is the whole ethos of this model um it it, it just needed to be stress-free don't try and push myself don't try and learn new techniques nothing like that just a couple of tried and tested colors tried and tested techniques get him done so he didn't end up as one of those just abandoned projects basically um you know we often talk on the podcast about you know finished is better than perfect so that was my my mantra with this guy. Now, whilst that's drying, I'm going to paint in all the skulls and bits and bobs on the model, like the leather, all the parts of the model that are are uh, not metallic. It's quite a lot of skulls, um, so I did a very, very simple uh, bone recipe for it. Uh, base coated them all using US olive drab, sort of this browny green color. Uh, and then to highlight them, I just mixed in some of that ivory that was on my palette. I used very, very few paints uh, on this model, which is a great way of speeding things up. Um, and as I said, that was that was key uh, with what we were doing. As you can see here, I've added the ivory in and just start doing the highlights. And I just did different levels of amounts of ivory uh, across the skulls so they at least looked a little bit sort of vaguely interesting um, next to each other. I did a, a video a few years ago on a, 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 the Indomitus Space Marine, like, standard bearer model um that's that's still one of my favorite bone recipes i've done um so if you go check that out that's an indomitus 
uh, playlist. So once all of those parts were dry, the skulls and the faces and stuff, I then gave the whole model a couple of coats of uh, Amma by MIG Ultra Matte uh, Lucky Varnish. Now, the last things left to do would be metallic, so I'd have a nice bit of contrast between the flats and the metallic areas. For the silvers, I've just used Metal Color Series uh, Burnt Iron. If you don't own any of these paints, I'd really recommend sort of se seeking one out and just grabbing one. They're a really great silver, uh, Ranger Silvers. They're just, they're just fantastic for base coating areas of like chain mail and, and stuff like that. They flow really easily. Um, yeah, well worth having. All the brass areas I just highlighted using uh, another ammo by MIG color called Old Brass. Done. Then I reached into my box of enamel washes uh, and I've got, as you can see here, greens, greys, browns and oranges. Uh, and I'm just going to start slapping those over um, just to get some grime and, and change the colors a little bit underneath. Um, and I really like the finish um, that enamel paints, uh, enamel washes give me. Uh, on the model. Um, Say so very little thinking with this. Uh, you don't need to varnish the model again or anything like that. As long as the paint's dry, the varnish is dry, nothing's going to happen. Um, you'd be absolutely fine. Um, so on the silver areas, I added a bit more of the brown and the orange, so it looked a bit more rusty. Uh, on the black and the red areas, I used more of the green and the grey green colours. Um, and was there another one? Oh, and I made sure I used plenty of green on the brass areas. Um, so sort of a verdigris type um, type look to them, just age them up a little bit. And this is the last major step of the model. So once that was dry, I then went back in and re-highlighted the metallics, just a little bit on the edges to bring bring back a little bit of that shine. Uh, I used a ton of blood for the Blood God on the poor uh, Ultramarine. Um, well, depends on your perspective, I guess. Um, and then I based him up just doing our usual... A basing I do for YouTube. I actually made a nicer base for him. Um, I had filmed it and everything and then he fell off it as I was doing the finishing touches and I got quite upset so I just stuck him on a basic one. Um, and that again is kind of a, <laughs> you know, if I wasn't doing this for a video I'd have probably thrown my toys out of the pram and walked off and, and he wouldn't have got done. M momentum got killed on this project um, for a couple of reasons. I really was just determined that the model had to get done. So I didn't want to have a whinge. I didn't want to have a moan. I wanted to get him done. You know, finished is better than perfect. I, I'm i not an artist. I can't draw um, sketch and sketch and paint traditional artwork. Um, but I love creating things in um, various universes, often Warhammer universes. And when I read about, you know, mutated, possessed Space Marines, characters like, you know, the Exalted from the Night Lords trilogy, Zardu Lark and the Blade Slays, things like that. I have this vision in my head of what they'd look like. And I captured that when I did the conversion of this model. It's not perfect by any means, but it's almost like doodling, you know, like sketching or whatever word you want to use. And it, it made me happy doing it. And I was happy with the result. And I'd have been really sad if it had only ever just stayed as this zenith or highlighted model in a drawer somewhere that nothing happened with but at least following some sort of tried and true techniques and recipes and and getting them executing them to a basic but an accurate level it's left me with a model that i can pop on the shelf and i can be really happy about you know would i have liked two weeks to paint him up to a, a really high level yeah possibly um but you know what i've got other projects i want to be working on um so you know we, we got him done and that, I think, is the, the key take home, really, from this. So I hope you've enjoyed the, the two videos on this character. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, I've got another two-part coming up for you very, very soon, uh, which, again, I hope you enjoy. The comments from the last video suggested that you don't mind the odd one being a two-parter when, when necessary. Um, and then I am itching to get stuck into something where we do push ourselves a bit more with the paintwork. So thanks ever so much for your support. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.